We are the Real American Wrestling Critics. Hello, America. It's me, Dan America. And with me is Bob the 86er. Hello, ladies. We are the Real American Wrestling Critics. I have been hit with allergies, but I am still going to review Monday Night Raw from April, April 29th. 29th. Aha, we both got it this time. Aha. Well, that wasn't in harmony, but neither was Raw from April 29th. Bob, what is our first face? First face that we saw was Cody Rhodes versus Randy Orton. It was uh, exactly what we figured we were going to get from that match, though. Would have been yeah. would have been sweet to see Cody win it. Yeah, we liked the match. There was a good uh kind of like grudge intensity going there, and we got a match full of moves. We got to see submissions and kicks and punches and suplexes, and there was that one superplex where it looked like Cody took where it looked like uh, Cody did most of the work, almost like Randy messed it up. Yeah, you know, I usually don't see Randy botch too much, but that looked like uh, he kind of did there. And, uh, you know, one thing you didn't see there was uh, Ted DiBiase. Every time I see Cody versus uh, Randy Orton, it kind of makes me miss DiBiase. Just a little bit. I miss uh, Joe Henning. Indeed. Okay, let's move on to the next face here. We are giving Dolph Ziggler versus... <laughs> we are giving Dolph Ziggler versus Kofi Kingston a face because it was a good championship match. Yeah, champion versus champion. And, you know, part of me wonders, does this help boost the U.S. championship or help degrade the uh, world championship? But at the same time, it was... An excellent match. Dolph Ziggler is, to me, become the face of the company. Especially in CM Punk's absence, I think he's well deserved. And you know, it kind of gave Kofi a good match. He hasn't. I mean, not that his match against the Star wasn't, you know, good. But I think if he's going to be U.S. champion, he's got to be in high-profile matches. However, a loss already as like what his second match on TV as U.S. champion, maybe first, and he's already losing. Kind of wondering what they're doing there. I enjoyed it. That is our second face, and our third face is... The Shield. Can't say enough good things about them. And the fact that they uh, took down John Cena, even better. I'll tell you this, I loved it when the three-man band came out to challenge them. I was laughing my katukas off, and... I'm not going to lie, broke out in a three-man band chant. I like the Shield because they're on SmackDown, they're on Raw, they can wrestle, they've got some mic skills, although it just seems like Dean Ambrose is doing most of the work, but Seth Rollins looks like... He can really rock the mic, however... Is that his name? Yeah, I don't think he needs mic skills, honestly, nearly as much as the other two. But it could... He's definitely the more powerhouse of the guy, so him being a strong silent type works. Yeah, well, well, we'll definitely see where they go with that. But, you see, it's the idea that we actually have a stable that is exciting about them. And Three Man Band is another stable, but Three Man Band's like the, hey, let's laugh at these jobbers uh, group. Although, they're all very good wrestlers, and I would like to see them get pushes instead of having most of our time devoted to Cena. The Shield gets a face because it's a group of new guys that is getting a good push, getting lots of TV time. I mean, they get to fight The Undertaker, and that is what we like to see. Uh, and we look forward to seeing how the story of The Shield pans out and where each of their careers are going to go post The Shield. And But we're enjoying The Shield as it goes, and we would like more stables. Time for the in-betweeny, America. Bob, what's our in-betweeny? Uh, gotta go with Mark Henry versus Sheamus in the tug of war. Um, it started off okay because think about it. Mark Henry did the tug of war against both members of uh, tons of funk. Uh, Tensai and Rodis Clay, and you know what? He pretty convincingly won against two of the largest guys. And then Sheamus comes down and challenges, and you know, he was putting up a bigger fight than the two of them. Kind of made it a little like, you know, over much oversell. 
and it kind of like brought it down somewhat. I like the fact that they're building a feud between these two, and the fact that it's going to be like, you know, a good, strong, fast guy versus an even stronger, like, slow guy, so it's going to be all a matter of strength and whatnot. It, it should be a good match, but I just feel like a, that tug-of-war thing just, I don't know, kind of set it back a little. Yeah, I didn't know how I felt about the tug-of-war. In fact, I walked out and just heard it from the kitchen. That's uh, how much it captured my interest. But from what I saw, it looked pretty convincing. I saw it when Mark Henry pulled Albert. I saw it when Mark Henry pulled Tensai across the ring. When Brodus Clay came out, I lost interest. So I didn't really see the Seamus part. And I don't know if I would have liked it or not. You know, I agree with you. Smaller strong guy versus giant strong guy does seem like an interesting match. And I hope that uh, they carry it longer than they did Ryback, Mark Henry. America, it's time for our three heels. And unfortunately, Bob the 86er was sent off to Melmac to get macaroni and cheese from a convenience store that I know there because it's really good macaroni and cheese. But also I want him to pick me up a couple of videos and, you know, come back and tell me what's up. So in his place, we have a special guest commentator for our heels. And it is none other than the R.A.W.C. champion, Dellywood Hulk Hogan. Well, you know something, dude. I don't know where that Bob the 86er guy went. Some mailman place. But the champ is here. The real champ, not that John Cena clown. Let me tell you something, dude, right now. I'm here. I'm doing it live. Let's do it, brother. Okay, and we are live. And wait, no, we're not live. This is a podcast. We are not live at all. Oh, I'm little... very alive, brother. Well, I just got a little pumped up there. I'm sorry. But let's get on with it. Okay, the first heel is... The Divas Match, or at least the Divas Division, if you want to call it that. Deli, would you want to tell them why? Well, you know something, dude. As I was sitting there watching the Monday Night Raw, I couldn't believe my eyes. You want to call that wrestling? I put up a better fight trying to open a Twinkie, brother. That was just embarrassing. Those ladies should be unable to put on a much better match than that, dude. Well, I enjoyed it because they were we we wearing very little clothing, and I like that kind of thing. It happens, but I didn't really enjoy the match that much because, uh, you know, uh, Funkadactyl there. What's her name, Dellywood? Oh, it doesn't even matter who was in there. It was just a sham, brother. Well, she got off some good uh, aerial moves, but then it ended. Well, you know, that's just the point. These matches have been just that terrible. Whatever happened to the great days of the women's wrestling? Whatever happened to Sensational Sherry, brother? You know, that's a woman who I could look up to. That was a wrestler. These so-called jabroni, they ain't nothing, dude. Of course, I'd like to see more Tamina. I'd like to see Tamina Natalia over the Bellas versus the Funkadactyls and uh, AJ and Caitlyn, although... Well, maybe throw Caitlyn into the mix, but AJ, well, let AJ wrestle. We'll have her drop the Psycho Girl act and just be AJ. The next heel from the Real American Wrestling Critics America is, of course, John Cena. What's he trying to do, brother? Tape up his ankle and try to play some lame joke? I can't even do that because I'm not just that lame. I may not be the best guy in the world when it comes to the kitties and all that. Why? Because I'll eat their Happy Meals. I'm not afraid to admit it, dude, because I'm the champ. I can do what I want, but he should be able to do what he wants to do, too. That's fine. Put on a good match. Don't do that lame joker crap, brother. And, of course, once again, John Cena generated little to no reaction from the crowd. It was all Kane and Daniel Bryan in the main event. And, no, it's not because he had a hurt ankle. It's because nobody really wanted to see him. The crowd wasn't popping during the promos for the match where, you know, they built up the silly little storyline that Cena will wrestle through the pain. And, oh, well, he lost the match, didn't he? 
Yeah, he did. Undertaker would have put up a better fight, but that's just my opinion. But the point is that Cena did not sell it. Cena did not get any pops for it. Like, yeah, he got pops from the kids. Like, the kids that weren't paying attention anymore three hours into the show. Because at first, you kind of hear the kids, but by the end of the show, you don't anymore. And that's when we should be putting up Dolph vs. Alberto Del Rio. Not in the middle of the freaking card. Get the Cena Kitty stuff out of the way first. Better yet, just limit them to Saturday Morning Slam or something. I don't know. You know, he could be the Saturday Morning Champion. And you could market a cereal around him. Yeah, that'd be great. Because, well, I'm getting way too ahead of myself here. So I'll just jump into the next heel. And that is this commercial stuff. Dellywood, what is that? Well, you know something, dude. All they did was just make me extra hungry. And you know what happens when that happens? I get up, I leave, and I'm not watching the Monday Night Raw anymore. And that's just a bummer, dude. Because now I'm in the refrigerator stuffing my face when I don't even want to. What's that? What's that? You trying to get the champion overweight? Well, you know something, dude. I'm already overweight, so your ploy is just a ploy. I believe, um, you know, the term for WWE now is like, what, the pony show? You know, it's supposed to be the A show, but all I got was A, as an acid indigestion. I didn't get acid indigestion because I didn't have anything to eat while I was watching the show. However, I did have a glass of water and it was refreshing. But, from what I saw of the show is that... It was chock full of commercials. They put some wrestling in there. It's kind of like when you get a jelly donut from like a market or a grocery store jelly. And they're never really that good because they squirt just a little bit of jelly into the center. And you're eating through this like rough, like dense cake donut to get to jelly that you think is going to be there. And when you get to it. It's just like all gone on one bite, or it's not enough jelly. What do you think, Dollywood? You got any of those donuts, brother? And that was what the wrestling was like on our weekly wrestling show. I mean, great for the kids that got to be honorary superstars for the night because that was their make-a-wish. You know, I'm all for that. However, you don't need to take away from the product and what you're really taking away from the product is the intensity because I don't see anything intense about John Cena. The man's a clown and your commercials decorate the thing like it's a carnival or a fair. Uh, you know, I know that, you know, traditionally there's wrestling shows are carnivals and fairs, but you're the WWE or the wrestling show that's in arenas and for uh, I see, I, I don't care if it fails now, you know? Let them go back to wrestling under tents. Humble them. Maybe it'll make the product better. Okay, America, I may have gone off on a rant there, but Bob the 86er has returned from Melmac for our final thoughts. Bob? Well, Monday Night Raw, let, let's flash back a little bit. Let's listen to this for a brief second, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. One of the great things about the Attitude Era, and perhaps most wrestling eras in general, was not just the wrestling, but the commentary. Lately, the commentary on Monday Night Raw has just been atrocious by, like, Jerry Lawler and Michael Cole. JBL's doing a pretty good job, but sometimes he gets sucked into that too. And it's just bringing the show down to an even further level it shouldn't be brought down to. Well, you may not like what you had to say about the commentary. However, I do. I agree, and we gave Raw a heel for many different reasons, and the commentary has not been helping it. I mean, I respect each commentator for what they do, but for some reason, it seems like they're not even trying now either. Yeah, they're just sitting there, like, making, like, random jokes and ma random references instead of calling the match. It's like, you know, 
Maybe we just got spoiled with guys like, you know, Jer uh, the tandem of Jerry Lawler and Jim Ross. You know, both of them used to, especially JR, would call the match as, like, you know, in the wrestling moves. Let, you know, educating everyone as to what's going on while it's keeping everyone entertained. I think that's what their job is to do. You know, you have the play-by-play -play guy and the color commentator, and we're just getting three color guys that aren't even paying attention to the half the matches. Yeah, I sure do miss knowing... I sure do miss them calling out the action. They don't really do it as much as they used to, or at least they don't do it like the people that were used to doing it because been, we've been watching since the 80s. And... They have some pretty big shoes to fill, and I think, or at least how I feel about it, is that they're not really trying to fill the shoes. It's like they're trying to fill the shoes that with dollars to make up for where they're not fitting, and those dollars are the commercials, because I find the commentary to be more like a infomercial at times than commentary in a wrestling match. I still like Jerry Lawler. I like it when JBL is edgy and snooty, but sometimes that's all they're being, or they'll just like get completely sidetracked. And above all, why would you say that the crowd is growing nuts for Cena when they're booing them? I like it when JBL kind of acknowledges it, but then they joke about it so that it'll back off, and then the truth is denied, ladies and gentlemen. And that is something that the real American wrestling critics are not about. Because we like Ben and Jerry's ice cream. We are the real American wrestling critics.